Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms, Specialty in Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. Have you ever had to draw blood on a sheep or a goat? Um, if you haven't yet, chances are you're probably going to have to. Uh, we've talked a lot about genetic testing in some of our previous videos. That, of course, requires a blood sample. Um, there's also lots and lots of cool things that you can do with blood samples. Other than testing for genetic traits such as scrapie and dwarfism, um, you can also take blood samples to your veterinarian for them to run diagnostic um, tests on for you if you have questions about what's going on with your animals. You can also send blood samples in to get pregnancy checks done on your animal as well. Most of this is fairly inexpensive. It just requires you doing what you need to do in order to successfully draw blood. This is more complicated than most of the things that we've taught you in some of our videos, but I don't think it's anything beyond your scope of practice. Also, this opens you up to IV um, medication administration um, if you were to become even more advanced. So blood draw is the good place to start. Placing an IV is something that's gonna be a little bit more advanced than that. So without further delay, let's get started talking about drawing blood on your sheep or goat. All right, so I'm an artist, you guys know this. Uh, you can tell these are just wonderful pictures, but this is a sheep or a goat. Which one? I don't know. Anatomy wise, they're both about the same. So looking at the side of uh, this sheep slash goat, uh, there's a few landmarks that we need to know. Now our goal today and what your goal should be for blood draw is going to be the jugular vein. The jugular vein is pretty superficial. That means that it's kind of on the outside where you can feel it very well on the side of the throat. Um, a lot of people will worry about sticking an artery. An artery is actually kind of buried in the neck structure a little bit farther uh, than the jugular vein. So chances of you hitting that artery are pretty slim. So what we're going to be talking about today is uh, finding the jugular vein and accessing the jugular vein for a blood draw. If you were to look at our sheep and goat from the uh, front here, you can see that you're going to have a jugular vein that's going to run on both sides of the neck. Um, and we're going to apply pressure with our hand where this V is. So you're going to see me um, applying pressure with my hand uh, to get that vein to pop out a little bit. Um, I advise if you're right-handed, uh, you're going to want to stand on the right side of the sheep. That is, if you are the sheep, the right side of the sheep, um, not facing the sheep. Um, so if you're right-handed, you're gonna stay on the right-hand side, and that's because you're gonna want that right hand free to draw the blood. If you're left-handed, obviously, you're gonna be on the left side of the sheep. That way you can utilize that left hand to draw the blood. So, now that we've got our landmarks out of the way and we've talked about that, we need to spend a little bit of time talking about our various access devices, specifically needles and the proper way to access a vein. Um, so, with that being said, Let's head on over to our mock-up and I will show you how to do this before we actually do this on a real animal. All right, so here we are. Um, this is our mock-up. As you can see, um, this is just a mock-up that has a couple tubes inside of it. It has a, a dermat a layer and then it actually gets down into the tissue layer. Um, and this is to help people learn how to, um, how to draw blood. You can purchase these on Amazon, although I highly suggest not doing it. I think it's a bit overkill, but for the purposes of our demonstration, um, we're going to show you how to use this. So uh, we're gonna need an alcohol wipe or a um, iodine wipe, and then you're gonna either need a needle with a syringe, or you're gonna need a needle with a syringe, or you're going to need a a uh, vacutainer um, blood collection set with whatever color tube top your veterinarian or um, lab tells you that you need. You can do this either way. I prefer to use the BD vacutainer kit. Um, I think it's easier, but by all means, you can use a needle and a syringe as well. The main thing that I want you to consider is you're going to have to, especially for you being a beginner, you're going to have to shave the animal down, um, down to the skin, in order for you to see where, um, where exactly it is that you're gonna be accessing um, the vein. 
And if you look, when you're accessing the vein on the animal and you feel with your finger, you're actually going to be able to feel that vein um, underneath there with your finger. Now, one thing that I want you to pay very close attention to is your needle and the bevel of your needle. So if you look very closely at the tip of this needle, you'll see that it is angled. We have a slight downward angle right here on this needle. And we always want that angle pointing down, that is the bevel pointing up. So the sharpest point of this needle is that point down there, that tip down there. Um, and then it gets smoother up here towards the top. And there is a reason for that. When we access the vein, we're going to be going in, we're gonna hold the skin taut, we're gonna go in at less than a 45 degree angle, maybe a 20 to 25 degree angle. And as we perf that vein, a lot of times you'll feel a little bit of a pop. And at that point, you're going to actually rock back on your needle and that bevel is going to slide across the top of that vein. If you were to go in upside down like this and rock back and push in further, that tip is going to get caught on the top of that vein and it's going to tear it up. So again, I clean with my IV prep. I've got my needle grasped in my hand. Uh, normally I would have a, uh, well, let's do it this way. If you're going to be using a syringe, this is the way that you're going to be doing it. So I might as well show you this way. Always make sure you use a uh, screw top. Uh, the lure locks don't use the kind that just slide on there. Um, so you're gonna be holding the needle in your hand like this. I like to put my finger on the top. With the bevel up, palpate your vein and find it. And then at about a 20 degree angle, you're going to advance the needle Right now I can feel it popping inside that vein. As soon as I feel it pop, I'm going to rock back, flatten it out, and advance farther. At this point, I can hold this with my hand and I can draw back with my plunger and this should fill up with blood. When you're done, you're going to slowly remove the needle apply pressure over the site and hold it for 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds. When you're done, just let go and the animal should be fine. Okay. Um, there are times that some of you may be tempted to reuse needles when you're doing a uh, venal access. Uh, I do not want you to uh, reuse needles. So again, 20 degree angle, 20, 25 degree angle, bevel up, advance the needle you'll feel a pop or you will see some blood start to fill up in the tube rock back advance the needle further and go ahead and draw back now if you don't get any blood return you may have to draw the needle back you may have to move it to the side a little move it to the other side a little whatever it is that you need to do uh, to get access to that vein. You may get in there and feel, you may have to fish around a little bit, although that uh, jugular vein is very, very large. And as long as you're over it, you should have no problem getting blood out at all. Now, I am not a fan of doing it this way with the syringe and the needle. I prefer uh, to use my uh, BD Vacutainer. Um, you can purchase these online. We'll have the link below for you to do that. So what I like to do is this has a butterfly grip on it. And that means you can grip it just like this. It's got some little grippies on it here uh, for you to have your fingers grip on. And again, it's got a bevel just like our other one. I don't know if you can see that there, but it's, it's got a small bevel on it. In this case, process is going to be the same. You're going to clean off the injection site. You're going to line yourself up over top of it, 20, 25 degree angle, advance your needle. You'll feel the pop when you get into the vein, lower the needle down and advance it. At this point, you can hold it in. You'll see blood flow entering into the, your tube 
And at this point, you or a, um, a helper can grab your vacuum tube and simply pop it over um, this plunger right here. You'll just insert it in and you'll see that it starts to fill up with blood. You can remove it. You can grab another one and pop that in as well. They make a plastic cup that actually goes over this uh, that makes it a little bit easier for you to uh, line up the vacuum tube, but I don't spend my money on that because I feel this works more than good enough for me. Um, the reason that I like these butterfly um, vacuum tainer hookups a little bit better is you get a flash of blood into it as soon as you hit the vein that I like. Um, it helps you to visualize if you're in the right place. The other thing that I like about it is it seems to be more comfortable for the animal. It's easier for you to handle. Um, I feel comfortable with placing it in there and letting go of it and I can just hook up and do what I need to do. It seems to work pretty good. This is a little awkward. Um, it's hard to do one handed. It's hard to pull that plunger back um, one with one hand, although you can do it. You can plunger. Ideally, I'm a little bit more advanced. Um, I'm advanced vascular access uh, by trade. That's what I do in the hospital is place uh, central lines and things like that in patients. But when I access a vein, I would utilize my hand back here and actually pull back some suction to see if I get some blood up in here. But for you guys that are just starting, that's, that's very, very advanced. So I would recommend just go online, get yourself some of these BD vacuum retainer um, hookups and just do it that way. All right, so another little tip that I wanted to talk with you about and another reason that I like these uh, vacuum tainer hookups is if I am going to access this vein again bevel up 20-25 degree angle access the vein feel the pop lower down advance I'm gonna see the blood come up in here if I want to uh, there's a little trick that a lot of people don't know and this is another reason why I don't buy the cups that go on the end you can remove and just have a regular syringe this end comes off of here you can actually put a syringe on there and draw blood up into a large syringe as well if that's easier for you then what you can do is you can take that syringe full of blood put a needle on it and go ahead and access uh, these as well the other thing you could do is, and what I use these for sometimes, is I would draw up medication in here, like vitamin B. If I was going to give an IV dose of vitamin B, draw my medication here, screw this on, and go ahead and flush. And that um, gives the medication as well. So just a little tip that I wanted to talk with you about uh, for today's blood draw. We are going to actually be leaving the tip on here. Um, and doing it that way. All right, so we've got that out of the way. Uh, I think the best thing to do now is just to bring the animal in here and to do a live run and to show you exactly how we go about doing this. All right, so here we are and we've got our sheep here and she's gonna help us out. She's gonna be one of our replacement ewes uh, here on the farm. So we're gonna get her tested um, for scrapie and make sure that she doesn't have any uh, genetic abnormalities, dwarfism, anything like that. Uh, go ahead and bring her a little closer to me. There you go. All right, so I can already feel uh, the vein here in the throat, um, but I just want to verify that that's what I'm feeling. You can feel it with your fingers. It's going to feel like a little tube in there. If you want to take your hand down here at the bottom and push up against her lightly, um, you'll actually feel it pop out a little bit more. So in this case, I can feel it right here. Um, so I've kind of got my landmark and at this point I'm going to go ahead and clean her off so I know where I'm going I'm going to go ahead and clean her off. I'm going to let go and my partner here is going to hand me my alcohol swab up here on the counter and I'm just going to go ahead and clean her off again verify where I'm at and I'm gonna go ahead and just clean her off as best I can. Uh, if you're new to this and you've never done this before, you're probably going to want to um, use your clippers and clip them off, trim them down a little bit. Okay, go ahead and hook up my tube for me. 
Wendy, if you come up and over my finger, you can see that flash in there. And now Jocelyn's drawing that in. You feel a pretty good size pop when you get into it. And you can see that it's going in. Jocelyn's filling up the tube. Sometimes you got to manually manipulate them around a little bit to get them to fill up appropriately. Get as much as you can and then call it good. Pretty comfortable for her. She's doing okay. How's our blood flow there, Joss? Just, Did it just basically done. Is it done? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and withdraw. I'm going to take some gauze, hold pressure. I've got my tube with my blood sample in there. I can mail this off to my lab and we are good to go. It's going to take you a little bit of practice before you get good at it. Um, but after you do, oh, 10 or 12 of these, you'll be a real pro at it. Again, just feel for that. Just feel for that vein and go for it. Alrighty, so that is drawing sheep blood or goat blood uh, 101. Hopefully you learned a lot. Hopefully this gave you some insight into how to get this done for yourself on your small farm. I'm Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.